Step right up. This is not pee. Hired. <laughs> okay. What? Mm. I, you mm. know, that brought back memories of childhood. I drank a lot of apple juice as a child. I thought you were going to say. <laughs> I drank a lot of pee pee as a child. Do you, have, you don't have apple juice in your house now? I do not. Because you know why? Because there's no nutritional value in it. Well, I don't care. It tastes good. Sometimes we have apple juice, and sometimes late at night, I'd be like, the only thing that could hit the spot right now is apple juice. When I would go to, and my, I'll drink half of the thing. When I would go to my aunt's house, you got some pee on your glasses. Uh, you really need to get it off. When I would go to my aunt's house as a child, um, you're not gonna tell me one of those weird stories about like somebody falling down and no, tra like a traumatic thing that happened with a relative that I don't know about. She would have. Diet Mountain Dews, which I hated, so I didn't drink those, but I would not drink water as a child. I was a spoiled child who was not forced to drink water, and every child should be forced to drink water, but I wasn't. I regret it. I'm worse off because of it. So I would insist upon drinking something that I liked in her fridge, and but she did have a steady supply of apple juice, mm -hmm. except she'd water it down. Yeah. My Aunt TC 50 50 her apple juice. Lots of moms do that. Because of all the sugar. Yeah. My wife does that sometimes. It was horrible. If you've had the straight stuff, you don't want the you don't want it cut. You don't want to cut that juice. Where do you guys get this? You want to know the truth? Somebody have a test recently? Do you want to know the truth? It hasn't been used, has it? It was my pee. <laughs> <laughs> Your pee tastes just like apple juice. <laughs> Okay, we right, want to tell bottled, you a story. Bottled at the source. We want to tell you a story. Our friend uh, John, we were hanging out with. Now, uh, we didn't ask his permission, so should we use his name? John. That's a very common name. It is. And we that's not be his real name anyway. Um, he told us a story we have to tell. Um, First of all, he is in currently injured. Like he he dis he uh, like tore, he tore a ligament his, and a meniscus. His, well, he, tore his, he tore his ACL and his uh, meniscus on his right leg. Right. So we were asking him about that, and then and so, he was in another country when it happened. He was in Africa when it happened. So we were like, oh wow, he's playing, he's playing soccer. Serious with some injury kids in and Africa. And this is this is a big deal. So that led to uh, a mutual friend who was there saying, well. John, now you got to tell him all your other injury stories. He's like, "Well, where do you want me to start? You want me to start with the waterfall, or you want me to start with the basketball court?" <laughs> and so we we were like waterfall, not realizing that the basketball court story was one of the most memorable it's ones the ever. Best. So, so I'm going to tell you the basketball. So court So the waterfall, story. he fell off a waterfall and uh, decimated his shin and had to hike out for miles, but and had umpteen hundred stitches or whatever. Well, let me set the stage for the basketball story. Basketball story. Basketball. He grew up in Indonesia, and uh, he was, they played soccer on a basketball court. I don't think this is necessarily common, but it was like doing like an indoor soccer kind of thing. Indoor soccer. So they're running around on this wooden floor, and he's running after a ball, and he's trying to like slide. He goes, he slides head first on the basketball court. So he's on his stomach. Sliding because typically a, a soccer slide is feet first, so yeah. that confused me. But it's important for the story that he slid on his belly as if you, if maybe you were, he was celebrating having scored a goal, like, whoosh, or maybe he tripped over something. I can't remember exactly what led beep, to it. Slid that way, but he's sliding along this wooden floor, and this is a developing country, so it's not like uh, the basketball court has this incredible polished floor. I mean, this is kind of a wood floor, i.e. There may or may not be some splintering happening in the wood. So he um, is just coasting along, but he comes to an abrupt stop, like he comes to a stop, and he feels this pressure on his right thigh. thigh. And his friends come over, and, he, and he's experiencing pain, and so he's screaming out a little bit, and then so his friends like, "What's wrong?" And he grabs him, and to pick him up. And he tries to pick him up until John just sh lets out the most blood curdling screech you would ever hear, combined with the fact that his friend encountered uh, an unexpected amount of resistance, he lets go. So then he sees his friend kind of like look down under him to see what's going on. And he says he sees his friend look, look, looks down and then looks at him and he's like, and he eyes as big as saucers. Something was wrong. It turns out what had happened is there was a piece of a wood plank that was up like this, that was splintered a little bit. And as he's sliding, it went into 
his upper thigh and went down his leg under the skin and then came out above his knee but did not detach from the floor. So if you can imagine, this is somebody's leg right here, and there is a splinter that has pinned them to the basketball Skewer, court. Skewered and him. cannot get up. And so. And he, it's like that wide, that wide of a piece of basketball so, court. And so John says to his friend, run get my dad. So <laughs> the guy runs. He was 15 years old at the time. 15 years old, the, his friend runs down the street, goes to his, his dad's house and, and brings his dad back. His dad looks at the situation and you know, they start to pull him a little bit and he's just like going crazy. It, it hurts so bad. There's not a lot of blood because it's like, it's he's skewered in there. It's, it's a puncture wound that currently has the thing in it. So. so his dad says, call the doctor. So they call in the doctor who they knew and the doctor comes in and she takes a look at, no, no, no. Her, her, his dad, before he called the doctor, took a- Leatherman. Took a Leatherman knife, pulled it out like a serrated edge and starts to try to saw it, but it's so close to- Well, it's like this. His skin that he couldn't and saw- And he's on top of it. Couldn't so saw the big splinter loose. get it in there. Calls the doctor, doctor comes in, takes a look at it and says, we have to do surgery right here. Right. So, so they end up uh, putting an IV in him and getting him ready for surgery. Now, meanwhile, we're in Indonesia and right before they go into surgery, the power goes out because the power goes out like three times a week. So all of a sudden the power goes out and now they bring in the flashlights because it's nighttime by now and they're shining flashlights all over him and we're in the jungle. It's, it's, not, it's like 90 degrees, 90% 90 humidity and now there's all these bugs all over him because of the, the flashlights attracting the bugs in there and he's like really sweaty. And he said and he like was- Getting into his shirt and stuff. He said he was basically laying like this for two hours before they started the surgery with the, skewered on basketball court. And so then they gave him an anesthetic to put him out uh, cut. I'm some, now. I'm now. I'm John now. I'm, somehow I'm cut him out of the floor, and I actually you know what they know. What they did is instead of cutting him out of the no, floor, they didn't. The, yeah. After they gave him the anesthetic, they pushed him off of it. They pulled him off. They, they, pulled, they, pulled, they, him they pulled. They pulled him off of it, and it just <laughs> and, and imagine in the, process, the sound that made. In the process, it broke off inside of him. So they ended up removing the wood that they could and sewing him back up. So when he woke up, he had all these stitches, but he said over the next three months, he had to daily, this, this is not for those who have a, a, a weak stomach. Oh, you're telling them that now. <laughs> up until this point, this it was part all is worse. Sailing. He had to start at the top and push down on his leg like a toothpaste tube and squeeze the pus out of the bottom hole. And then he had to go to the doctor on a regular basis and she would, feel through it and she'd she would poke feel, around. She'd poke around and it was like a seesaw. She'd feel a piece of wood that was still in her and it would pop up and then she would put some local anesthetic there, cut it open and pull the wood out. She did that for three months, going in and getting the wood. So the moral of the story is don't play soccer on a basketball court in Indonesia. You're welcome.